It is conceivable that the market for milk is a perfectly competitive market. In this video, we're going to examine the conditions for perfect competition and what might impact the long run equilibrium. Now let's start by examining the conditions that are required. First of all, there need to be a large number of identical firms. All of these firms need to have the same cost functions, but the firms are small relative to the size of the market. All consumers need to have perfect information about prices so they can always go to the cheapest provider if any provider is providing at a cheaper price. And all of the goods, all of the firms need to be producing a homogenous good. Now this sounds like it will be met for milk in that milk produced by one set of cows is likely to be the same as any other set of cows. The purchasers of milk tend to be big supermarkets who can observe the um, prices of very many dairies and there are a very large number of relatively small dairies which produce milk for many supermarkets and all of them have the same sorts of costs. So maybe milk is a perfectly competitive market. So when we're looking at equilibrium in perfect competition, we need to consider equilibrium in both the firm and within the market. Now, on these diagrams, we've got a set of axes for the firm and a set of axes for the market as a whole. On the firm axis, we've got the marginal cost of production for the firm and the average cost of production for the firm. We're assuming that all of the firms are identical and all of the firms face the same marginal cost and same average cost. So we will have a market supply and a market level of demand. And the equilibrium point, the point where the supply and demand are equal, we will end up with a market equilibrium. That will give the quantity supplied by the market and the price at which the market supplies. So we've got equilibrium within the market as a whole. The firm will want to try and maximize its profits. It will choose a quantity to produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Now here, the price that they're receiving is going to be the marginal revenue. A small change in the quantity that the firm produces is gonna have no impact on the price. So if they increase the production by one, their revenue will increase by that price level. So the, price, the profit maximizing point will be the point where the price is equal to the marginal cost. Now, this is in long run equilibrium. The firm is making zero profits, zero economic profits, or what we know as normal profit. Since all the firms are identical, all the firms are making the same zero normal profits, and there's no incentive for other firms to enter the market. Now, soya milk is a imperfect substitute for cow's milk. Let's suppose that the price of soya milk falls. This will have an impact on the demand for cow's milk, and in fact, a reduction in the price of soy milk will likely lead to a reduction in demand for cow's milk. Let's see what the impact is on our perfectly competitive equilibrium. Now let's start from the position that we were in before in long run equilibrium. The fall in price of soy milk is going to lead to a reduction in demand for cow's milk. So we have a shift in the demand curve and that leads to a new market equilibrium price and quantity supplied. But individual firms are going to try and choose to produce at a point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost because the firm is a price taker. The price is still that marginal revenue. So the profit maximizing quantity for the firm will be produced here. But at this point, the price that they're receiving is lower than the average cost. So the firm's going to be making a loss on every unit that they produce. Now, in the short run, this is sustainable, but in the longer term, it's not sustainable for the firms to carry on making such a loss. So individual firms, individual dairies, are going to start leaving the market. Firms will start leaving the market and that will have an impact on the overall market supply. The overall market supply will be reduced and the supply curve will shift to the left. That will lead to an, an increased price and the firms will increase their quantity to the, to the point where the new marginal revenue, the new price, is equal to their marginal cost. In the long run, we converge back to the long run equilibrium 
where all firms are making normal profits. In our final example, let's examine what happens if there's a change in technology. Now, the change in technology that we're going to examine here only impacts the fixed cost of production. It doesn't have any impact on the marginal cost of production. So the only change that will occur is that the average cost of production will be reduced. Now, the price is unchanged in the market. The quantity supplied by the market is unchanged. The marginal cost is unchanged. The firm's marginal revenue is unchanged. So in the short run, nothing is going to change in terms of individual firms' decisions or the market decisions. Other than that, the individual firm is now making a profit because the price that they're receiving is higher than the average cost at the quantity that they were supplying. But in the longer term, other firms will observe this profit. They will want to enter the market. So there will be an increase in supply. Individual firms will lower their quantity to the point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And we reach the point with zero profit or normal profit. All of these examples have been focused in milk, but we could have applied them to any case where we could argue that we have perfect competition. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.